I do have a couple of questions, one that came in before the meeting actually, and one that came in during our discussion today. So I'm gonna start with those. Uh, Charlie, uh, I believe it was uh, Michael that asked about uh, the increase in P loss in your studies of erosion and runoff and P loss from those uh, 21 uh, sites. If the soil erosion and the runoff reduced, why did we see an increase in P loss? All right, can you hear me or do I have to do something? You're in good shape, okay. thank you. Thank you. Well, with that compost application, of course, there was a lot of phosphorus applied. And as I pointed out, that increased the soil test phosphorus in the top one inch from 25 parts per million to 500 parts per million. And uh, so that uh, phosphorus was very available to runoff uh, and erosion loss. So I think that answers the question, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. And, and it was a combination that that increased source at the surface caused the increase, the reduced erosion and runoff caused that, uh, tended to offset a, a big chunk of that. Increase. Right. That's right, Rick. Very good. So thank you, uh, Michael. I hope that answers your question. Uh, please post your questions in the Q&A box. Uh, this uh, question came in before the, the actual webinar I thought we would want to get to. Uh, in order to change these organic matter in our soils using manure, it, it often is a matter of years, uh, maybe even decades for us to see a, something like a 1% increase in soil organic matter. Uh, but yet, Charlie, you saw some changes that were occurring in the first couple of weeks of your experiment. So are these differences in the properties that we're seeing a result of just strictly organic matter change or is there something else going on here? Uh, the soil organic matter change would not be very great. The quantity of manure, I forget what the rates were, but it would be very small compared to what the organic matter was out there already, which was around 3%. If you do the calculation, it means, you know, well over 500 tons of organic matter. Um, but it was that fresh organic material uh, and its reaction with, um, with the uh, soil particles for the improved aggregation is what we saw. So not so much a change in organic matter, but the, the reaction of that new material with uh, the existing soil. Great, thank you. Linda, anything else you'd like to add to that discussion? Um, just that the biology is also probably playing a role, um, increased fungal um, and bacterial populations with that new material. It's just the reaction with that new material. Um, a lot going on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there is a, a, an excellent uh, article that was written by a couple of soil scientists from the Michigan State University, wrote an extension publication on this topic. Uh, I don't know if I can find that. To, Put it out for you, but you do a search, you might find uh, find it. Uh, one of the things that those authors suggested is that that manure provides an energy source for a, a real explosion in the microbial uh, microbial community in the soils shortly after manure application. So it's that explosion in the, the microbial community because they have the energy to multiply, reproduce, uh, be, become more active. And that was their thoughts on why explaining the quick changes in soil properties that occur uh, that would have occurred long before we really increased the soil organic matter substantially. Uh, that seemed to uh, follow with some of your understandings, Charlie or Linda. Well, yeah, some increase in soil microbial activity. And as Linda said, especially with fungi, they would contribute to the improved soil aggregation quite quickly. But um, microbes, um, they need adequate water, ag adequate temperature, adequate air, adequate energy source, which is generally a organic material, adequate nitrogen. Those are the five main things. 
And if one of those is limiting and you cause a shift, you can get a very big burst in um, microbial activity. Okay, great. All right, uh, Jennifer has a question. Uh, with Charlie, you talked about changes in soil erosion. Uh, she didn't quite understand what was the, the science behind that change in, uh, or that reduced erosion loss. Well, we think it's primarily because of soil aggregation, and uh, which means um, improved water infiltration rate. We saw that with the less runoff, greatly reduced runoff, but then also the better uh, aggregation, less resistance to movement by water. That is more stable aggregates, larger aggregates, uh, easier, more difficult for water to to carry the um, the sediment down slope. Um, we did, one study I did not uh, mention due to shortage of time was where at that same site we did look at soil aggregation and this was four years after the compost application, the last compost application. So we're looking at a residual effect and there was a difference in in the what we call the macro aggregates, the water stable macro aggregates. So uh, this improved aggregation was continuing to give us improved runoff or improved water infiltration and less um, erosion. Excellent. Uh, Linda, anything you want to add to that? No. Yeah, I think that that was good. Okay, good deal. Um, please uh, add questions that you'd like to get answered to the Q&A box. Uh, got one more here, Charlie, I'd like to, Linda, I'd like to run by you. I guess I'd like both of you. Uh, you know, we've always uh, thought in terms of applying manure on fields where there's a, a nutrient benefit to be gained, whether that's nitrogen or phosphorus. If we're beginning to think in terms of prioritizing fields based upon the carbon that's in the manure and it, the carbon benefits, what would be the priorities you might set for those fields to receive manure first? Well, well Linda, I can take a shot at it. My father and the neighbors and the people in the neighborhood they recognized that there were certain soils where they could get a better response. So my father had a farm with very diverse soil types, including some sloping land that had once been, you know, badly eroded and was calcareous soil. He knew that he could get his best response to manure there. And that's still true now. Um, sometimes it might be a heavier clay soil. You want to improve the, um, aggregation. Sometimes it might be a relatively high sand soil uh, where you want to improve it. So it varies farm to farm, but um, uh, definitely, um, you know, can, you can expect differences in yield or differences in both soil and crop response to the manure based on soil type. With the erosion study I mentioned, for instance, we did not have an effective manure on crop yield. It was already prime land, um, you know, generally new, adequate nutrient availability and, um, um, and even though the inf water infiltration was improved with uh, the compost application, it seemed that water was not a factor. And anyway, it was an irrigated site. So that was a case we did not see any benefit to the crop, but there was a benefit to the soil in terms of reduced susceptibility to erosion. Great. Linda, do you have, want to add any thoughts to that? I would also echo using it on eroded. Well, I would, I would say you, to utilize manure on eroded land as a way to increase your, the soil carbon and improve the uh, soil biology, which will then positively impact, um, it'll, uh, increase your aggregation and decrease future erosion potential um, with that. And I think it's a good, um, it's, it's a good uh, 
treatment for those kinds of soils. I mean, manure has a lot of benefits and I think it could be used in a lot of, um, to solve a lot of problems in fields in general. Great. Uh, I'll share one observation. It was with a, a crop farmer here earlier in April that uh, had an uh, arrangement with a local dairy farm that he was providing silage to the dairy farm and this dairy was providing manure to him. Uh, this individual identified one of the first changes he saw in his fields was fields that he had had a history of areas in the field that would drown out. Water would pond in the field, he'd have drown out spots in that area. And very quickly after using manure on those fields, those drown out spots would become smaller and smaller and disappear with time. And so one of the places he was looking for those fields that tend to have those low spots that drowned out frequently and targeting those fields. Any reactions to that observation by that crop farmer? Uh, that does sound feasible. I wouldn't say that would be the case for all uh, situations where you have occasionally drown, drowned out, uh, but certainly in some cases, yes, that you would get that in, somewhat improved uh, aggregation and um, better soil aer aeration, um, maybe better water movement through the soil. Okay, all right. Uh, any other questions from our group today? I've been watching the uh, chat Q&A box and I think we've got all those questions answered. Leslie, am I missing anything here that we want to run by? Okay, I do see one question here. Uh, can the speakers clarify what sources of manure are typically used in these studies? Maybe relevant to that, uh, does it make much difference in terms of the source of the manure and, and the benefits that you've seen? So I can, um, in, in the literature review that I did, there was a lot of manure sources. Um, a lot of, primarily I would say the majority was um, cattle manure, beef manure, but there was also a lot of poultry, um, swine, and then there was uh, uh, manure, like beef manure mixed with, um, with straw, which is used a lot in Asia, um, and, and also composted. And it, my review also included municipal biosolids, so human waste, um, and there really wasn't a difference in broadly speaking in the different types of manure in terms of a lot of the properties I mean, it because it's so dependent on other other factors like the initial soil conditions and the climate um, I I did not see many differences between composted and non-composted manure in terms of the other properties I'm uh, I'm sure that Charlie can speak more to the differences between those two for the work that he's done though. So I spoke about compost compared with um, uncomposted feedlot manure and swine manure compared with feedlot manure and we did not see differences in effects there. Another study that I did not get to, we compared six different organic materials including dairy, composted dairy manure, two types of feedlot manure, a poultry manure, actually it was seven, I guess, and then three municipal biosolids, all processed in different ways. One thing that was different about the biosolids compared with the manures is that the biosolids had higher cellulose, lignin, and hemicellulose content compared to the animal manures. And I was a bit surprised by that, but then if you think about it, we flush a lot of paper down, and maybe there's some hair there, et cetera. You, you can speculate on what causes the high lignin and cellulose content. But, uh, um, and we did find that very much affected the rate of nitrogen release from the organic nitrogen that was applied. Where with the animal manures, we had almost twice as much of the organic nitrogen available to the crop uh, in the first year as compared to the biosolids. 
Uh, with the soil aggregation, we did not see much effect, but then we found that already the soil was very highly aggregated and there just wasn't much room for improvement anymore. And I think that's the case for a lot of our agricultural land. If it's producing 240 bushel corn really fairly consistently, um, it's, you know, you can expect it's pretty, pretty well optimized. Thank you. Uh, I think we have one last question I'm gonna to try to give to, and then we're gonna call her the end for the day and uh, thank the speakers for the knowledge that they shared. Uh, it was shared, uh, one last question was that we've heard a lot about the positives of animal manures and their benefits to soil. Uh, what about some of the negative interactions between uh, excess nutrients and others? Um, so this is not a black and white issue. Uh, anybody want to share kind of on the negative side what we have to be concerned about and where we need to, uh, how we avoid those becoming too big of an issue? Well, there is the concern with excess nutrient application, of course. Um, uh, I've observed some fields near feeding operations where the groundwater had very high nitrate levels, for instance. And of course, there's the phosphorus issue. Um, hormones and antibiotics may be of concern. Although with antibiotics, we need to keep in mind that even pristine uh, prairie soils have antibiotic resistance there because that's where we got our antibodies was from soil micro, microorganisms, the early antibiotics. Um, but those are still something we need to keep an eye on. So yeah, excessive nutrient application, uh, the implications of the hormones, and more important, the um, antibody res um, antibiotic application and the potential for enhancing resistance. So nothing is ever perfect, always uh, a mix of gray, any of these issues. But uh, anyway, today I, I hope we highlighted some of the, the real positives of animal manure from a soil health perspective. I really appreciate uh, the expertise that Linda and Charlie have shared with us today. And uh, hope that you'll be joining us uh, on that uh, third Friday again in, in uh, sure. June for our discussion of, uh, of uh, irrigation of animal manures and the impact on antibiotic, not antibiotics, uh, and pathogen transmission through irrigation systems and the research that's being done at the University of Wisconsin. So thank you all for joining us and hope to join forces with you again here in another month. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay.